continuing to be uh, the leading story in the international papers today. Flo Vilma now has the latest. That's right. Now, a lot of papers are focusing on what this unrest in Egypt means for political Islam. And there's actually a piece in a shark al Sat by uh, Youssef al-Daini. He's a Saudi Arabian uh, journalist. And he wonders, is this the downfall of political Islam? Basically, for him, political Islam is a globalized phenomenon that's currently fighting for its life, as uh, we can see in Egypt. Now, he says that Egypt's corrective revolution is a sign that Islamists have lost control over the post-Arab Spring political scene. Uh, and uh, actually, Gulf News wonders who will be next. And, uh, well, according to a cartoon, uh, they think that, well, it could be very well Turkey's ruling AKP party, which is uh, also seen as being a, an Islamic party. Uh, now, uh, as you can see there, uh, the AKP party is keeping a very uh, fearful eye on ongoing events in Egypt. Uh, and there's another piece, this time in the Christian Science Monitor, that actually kind of come to the defense of political Islam and it's, uh, and it's critical of some analysts, especially American analysts, who welcomed uh, the ouster of Morsi because this meant that it was removing a political Islamist and opening the way for secularists. But according to this article, the events in, in Egypt right now are actually a colossal setback for democracy. Uh, and they say that we must not view Egypt's coup with a Western lens. Basically, we must not assume that our Western historical experience is universally, uh, and universal, especially when it comes to questions of religion and secularism. This Western way of thinking is a trap, according to this article. And in fact, integrating Islamists into politics is essential in the Arab world. OK, another story getting a lot of attention. Now, high-level talks between the US and China that's right. Now, they kicked off in Washington, two days of talks, uh, and it's on the front page of China Daily today. Uh, Sino-U.S. talks help build trust. That's what it says on the front page. Uh, now, in the editorial, the uh, China Daily says that this is really a test for Washington and Beijing, a uh, test to see if they're capable of handling their differences. And while there may be some distracting topics like cyber espionage, et cetera, what's really important is trade and economic relations. And that's really what uh, the two countries should be focusing on right now. Uh, now, another piece this time in the Washington Post also uh, focuses on these talks and says that one issue that the U.S. needs to address is media freedom in China. Now, and this is not for human rights reasons, according to this article, but for trade reasons, because some of America's most iconic brands like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, etc., are blocked and other sites are banned, actually, and other sites are blocked like The New York Times or uh, Google. Uh, now, this censorship isn't just inconvenient. It means that, well, the U.S. media and technology companies are actually uh, they don't have access to this very large market and especially uh, one of uh, U the U.S.'s largest trading partners. OK, we're going to move on to a story from The Independent now, a medical uh, story, in fact. It focuses on a medical breakthrough in uh, gene theory. That's right. It's a little complicated, but The Independent You'll has gotten it, really sure. excited about it. They have a two-page <laughs> special yeah. where they go into much more detail than I'll be able to do. But basically, <laughs> uh, scientists have created uh, artificial human chromosomes and mm -hmm. have put them into mice. Now, they made these artificial chromosomes from scratch in a lab, and the Independent says this could radically transform gene theory. Now, there's an, a, an, a comment piece by Stephen Connor that explains just how powerful this technology is and how it could benefit the human race. For instance, mm -hmm. it could be used to make antibiotics and vaccines. Also, these artificial chromosomes could be uh, introduced, uh, you know, they could, in, scientists could introduce healthy copies into uh, diseased organs, etc. But they could also harm the human race if, for instance, uh, they're used to create lethal strains of microbes or weaponize viruses. But uh, the, in the editorial, The Independent points out that despite all these risks, this is a scientific cause worth backing because it has immense, immense potential for uh, creating wealth and jobs. Uh, and in fact, the government has said that it's going to invest tens of millions of pounds into this kind of research, and The Independent says that's a great thing. And finally, you found an article uh, getting a lot of attention on the harsh reality of war reporting. That's right. I'll just be brief about this, but it's a really worth reading this article. It's by Francesca Bori. Uh, she's a freelance Italian journalist based in Aleppo in Syria. Uh, now, this article appeared in the Columbia Journalism Review. It actually appeared uh, over the weekend, but it's been getting so much attention, I thought I'd mention it. Uh, now, she describes the very harsh reality of being a freelance war reporter, how they take immense risks, aren't actually paid that much, and are encouraged to report about blood blood and guts instead of understanding really what's going on okay. on the train. Well worth looking at the article in Columbia Journalism Review. Is that right? That's right. Excellent. Flo, thank you very much. Flo uh, Vilmo with the uh, International Papers here on France Van
Just bringing you up to date with that uh, breaking news story we were bringing you a little while ago. Um, this is to do with uh, the gang rape, which I'm sure you'll remember, and uh, subsequent death of a woman uh, in India, which uh, sparked a national outcry. Um, we've been hearing that the uh, verdict and the sentence have both been deferred. I did say earlier on that we've had the verdict and the sentence has been deferred. They have actually both been deferred. So uh, both of those uh, now not happening until July the 25th. That's uh, coming out of that uh, gang rape trial in India. Coming up here on France 24, we will uh, be telling you uh, the latest situation in Egypt, of course. I'll have all that uh, for you very shortly. And also in focus, a disability or special skills. The computer industry seeking out those with autism because of their special talent. I'll have a special report on that in focus in the next half hour. Stay with us if you can. Baghdad, 20th of March 2003, a barrage of fire engulfed the banks of the Tigris. The fate of the capital hung in the balance. A few days later, the regime collapsed. In December 2003, Saddam Hussein was captured in his Tikrit stronghold. Ten years after, France 24 returns to Baghdad. What is life like today in the capital as a fear of violence prevents a return to normality? Baghdad revisited an exclusive report on France 24.